Okay, so let's do a little session, which is only going to take a couple of minutes, and it's something that you can do uh, anywhere. Okay, so you don't have to be lying down on the mat or being in a special position. You can do it anywhere um, that is safe and comfortable for you. And it's to do with your breath and how your diaphragm um, works when it's your breathing and your pelvic floor and how they're connected, which they are. So it's all about this cylinder, um, the pelvic floor at the bottom, diaphragm at the top, transverse abdominus, your deepest abdominal muscle, um, the obliques, the internal and external obliques, that are your side bending, forward bending, side bending muscles, and also, and twisting, and also your rectus abdominis, which attaches here at the base of your sternum and runs down to the um, where your pubic bone is, and it helps you flex. So a lot of us get um, concerns that we're feeling a little bit like, oh, we can't see my abs, but the percentage of your body fat has to be quite low in order to see them. So we're always hit by these images in front of, health and fitness magazines and usually what the model has had to go through in order to look like that um, is for the day of their photo shoot not very healthy so and, and also there's photoshop too um, so and it's just a snapshot of their life for a certain moment um, they don't look like that 24 7 it takes a lot of work to look like that if it's their professional model so for you and me and our pelvic floor. So you just for a moment, take and just notice when you breathe in through your nose. Just notice what happens. And breathe out through your nose. Just notice what moves when you're breathing in your rib cage, in your back. So when you inhale through your nose, your pelvic floor is at rest on that first breath, on that initial inhalation. Your lungs are filling up with air, so your diaphragm muscle has to get out of the way of your lungs. So your lungs are expanding as you breathe in. And so your diaphragm gets smaller and moves down. Okay. So as you breathe in, just imagine that for a moment on your inhalation, the diaphragm drops. Don't worry about the exhalation, you're still going to breathe out, but just focus on what happens when you breathe in. Breathing in, diaphragm gently lowers. And when you get your head around that, for some of you, maybe you've practiced that before, some of you maybe the first time of noticing how you breathe, what happens when you breathe. Because often we talk when we breathe in is to pull everything in. If we're going down then to a, um, the other day, I think we were out walking and we're going down this tight little alleyway to get through to another side. And I was like, oh. everybody's taught to breathe in. And I said, oh, breathe out. And it just didn't sound right. Breathe out. I'm pulling everything in. So out and in, the way we describe these actions can be, um, our words and how we describe these things can lead to some confusion. Okay, uh, so we're breathing in, the diaphragm drops. Now, as you exhale, imagine that your diaphragm rises upwards towards the sternum. Breathing in, it drops. Breathing out, it lifts up. It rises back up inside of the rib cage. So the lungs fill up as you breathe in, obviously, so we need to create space for that. So the diaphragm has to get out of the way. And as you exhale, the diaphragm lifts and the lungs empty. Not completely, there's still some air in there. Now, can you imagine as you get that lovely flowing movement, almost like a jellyfish going through the water? Now we have this diaphragm which is like a big umbrella or big parachute that comes all the way around the front, but it also goes around your back as well. It's not just at the front, it also attaches around to the back as well. So you can imagine this huge circular 
um, it's a tissue, muscle, how it works, how it moves. It's not just a static thing. Can you imagine your pelvic floor is also a diaphragm? So we think of the pelvic floor being this front to back and left to right sling. Can you imagine it's like your diaphragm and it moves like the jellyfish? So when you breathe in and your lungs expand and the diaphragm drops, can you allow your pelvic floor to feel that it's doing the same thing? It's not going to move as much as your diaphragm. I mean, minute. And as you exhale and your diaphragm lifts, can you imagine that your pelvic floor is slightly lifting as well? When you breathe in and your diaphragm drops, can you imagine that your pelvic floor is slightly doing the same thing? And as you exhale and the diaphragm lifts, can you imagine your pelvic floor slightly doing the same thing? It follows what your diaphragm is doing. Breathing in, breathing out. It's very subtle. And you can imagine that it's so subtle. And in the seated video um, exercises that we were doing, that we were imagining that we were just, when we were working on the pelvic floor, it's very subtle, like you're pulling up a silk scarf inside you, well, for men, it's feels like the genitals are coming up inside you. It's not a, it's not a, like a key oil. Well, you've got to squeeze everything. I'm sure some of the key aren't like that at all. It's very gentle. We have this impression that um, because we look at these muscular images on these magazines, we think, well, the more I work my bicep, the more weight I lift, the bigger I'm, the more tone I'm going to have. I think if we squeeze the pelvic floor more, more tone it's going to have. When actually it's completely the opposite thing. You don't want to be squeezing too much because you'll you notice if you do squeeze your pelvic floor too much, you'll probably be pulling your sit bones together. You might be tucking your pelvis underneath you. you might be bringing your pubic bone closer towards your sternum, which rounds your back, and that downgrades your connection to your transverse abdominis, which is one of the muscles that wraps around you for the support of your spine, and that is part of the cylinder of your abdominal. So you don't really want to be doing that. You want to find that you're on your sit bones equally. Your tailbone is out the back of you. You're not rounding your back. Notice what happens to your head when you do that. It switches everything off because it comes forward. The weight of your head downgrades everything that's going on here. And it's very subtle, not forced. Okay. The breathing in, what happens? Where does your diaphragm go? Where does the diaphragm of your pelvic floor go? And when you exhale, where does your diaphragm go? Where does the diaphragm of your pelvic floor go? And you relax your jaw. You notice when you close your eyes, it might feel easier at first because you're taking away the stimulus or anything else that's coming in. Okay, so you can see that when you get used to that imagery of what's going on, that you can practice that when you're sitting, when you're lying down, when you're in the bath, when you're in the shower, um, you're sitting on the bus, sitting in your car. You don't have to be anywhere in particular um, to actually be focusing on this unless you feel that it's quite new to you, it seems a bit confusing, and you want some peace and quiet when you're doing this. So then shut yourself in the bathroom. Do it while you're sitting on the toilet or do it while you're sitting in the bath. Or just um, go off somewhere and practice when you're out walking the dog or when you're out sitting in the woods, when you're on your bicycle or when you're swimming, whatever it is you're doing. You know, some people here will be into their crafts and sewing, knitting, things like that. This is something that you could really focus on practicing. No one knows you're doing it. It's very subtle. Okay, I've been practicing. <laughs> 